So I'm on my deathbed. Wait, um, pause. You don't want to talk about my deathbed. Can we talk about that in one second? Let's go home. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. Lauren, I have good news. What is for your good you, news? Ashley. For well, me. Yeah. Um, well. I love good news. Your recent trend when it comes to um, getting Uh-oh. inebriated and texting <laughs> was heard by Tim Apple. Oh, oh my. Did he make me a product? Yeah. Tim Apple actually came out today and was like, we heard uh-huh. um, based off of last week's pod. Yes. That an unsending mechanism could be healthy. Healthy? Helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and iMessage has that answer coming to you very soon. I'm so glad that Tim Apple is a big fan of the pod. Well, no, obviously Tim, and by the way, hi Tim, good to see you. Um, yeah, so you will be able to undo your drug texts in a matter of weeks. That is so healthy. Healthy? Is that you said helpful and healthy? Healthy, healthy, healthy. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, what, the world's not gonna understand the pain that we went through not so long ago. They we're, have we're, they, no idea. An no. editing tweet button is coming, I'm sure. You think? Yeah. I saw that Elon is actually thinking about pulling out of that deal. He's that, I mean, there's- we can get I know, we'll see, if it, we'll see if it goes but, um, through. And the undo button, Yeah. think about it. Technology is a big one, big undo button. Think about the you typewriter. Know, you know what I was about to say, you know who's um, who's saying to us that we never knew the pain is the people who use typewriter. Yeah, the my, typewriter. My Nana had one in their, uh, her, their basement. Uh, my grandparents very much had a typewriter. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. Fun, in a novelty sense. In like a novelty sense yeah. of like, would I ever want to type a paper? What, I saw this on a Twitter the other day and it was like a trending thread. What's the one word that you always question how to spell? Definitely. Really? Yeah. Mine's accommodation. That, really? I have no idea if there's two C's, if there's two, C, or two C's, two M's, a comma. I don't, I, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. I have I'm no not idea. great at spelling things out in like the air, but on with like my, if I have my fingers on a keyboard, I'm pretty yeah. good. Accommodation is one of the ones that I just cannot wrap my head around. It yeah, definitely, um, my own title acquisition. Uh, Ooh, that's a hard one. That's a hard it, one. <laughs> it's really not. Um, you know what, what I always have trouble with too is um, prescription. Prescription? If it's prescription or prescription. Ooh, what about principal and principal? No, 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 principal because the, the principal is your pal. Capital, capital. Capital and capital, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then the generally people who don't understand they are there, there. Yeah, that one's tough. That one's tough. It's honestly, not that, I, it's I, not that hard. It's not that hard, honestly. It's it's it, well, for English speaking. I feel bad when people learn English as a second language and they're like, "So you're telling me we've got three theirs all used for separate things, and you want me to learn all three of these?" I, I'm just so glad that everybody seems to know how to speak English because. I certainly can't speak anybody else's language. Being bilingual, trilingual is a flex. A lot of syllables in that. Bilingual? Bilingual. Bilingual? Yeah, whatever. Bilingual. I just speak, I work with so many people that speak so many languages. Yeah, I know. It's it's another, it's indicative of the fact that I got there first. Right. The amount of times I feel like I, I'm like in a room and everyone speaks six languages and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we'll adjust for the one guy who doesn't speak any of our primary languages. And I'm yeah. like, thank you all. Thank you all. I am so simple. The simple tin of the room, yeah. I, am, I am here. I, there was, there. I was on a call last week with a, a team of folks from France and Brazil and then somewhere in Spain. Okay. And so like French, they all spoke. Portuguese, they all spoke. Uh, Spanish, they all spoke. But everyone also spoke English, which is the one language that I spoke. <laughs> but everybody else had like some combination of all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what the one we went with, yeah. For you. Right. Accommodating. You wanna give it that a- Nope. Okay. Okay, here we go, here we go. Okay. Here that's we okay. Go. Welcome back to Wild <laughs> Nine. You know what I hope everyone can spell? Subscribe. Discord. Oh. Discord, Discord and Lord DIY. And Lord Your DIY. Discord, I gotta say, is popping. Thank you so much. It is my favorite place to be. I probably spend an hour to two hours in the Discord every single day. And I think, I, don't, I you know what? I don't think I realized how many, think, I think there's two popular formats here. One is that it's a fan started Discord. Okay. So maybe the YouTuber or musician, whatever, doesn't even know the Discord is really existing and happening. And so has never like gone into the Discord. Like, okay. so they're aware that it exists, but they don't like participate in it. Okay, and then, an unsanctioned Discord? Not like an unsanctioned, like a, like I just, you know, a fan run. A community driven. A, that's the word, community driven. Mm. And then I think the other option is that someone creates a Discord, like a YouTuber influencer or whatever, creates a Discord and then just like fucks off and never goes back to it. I work with a lot of that, a lot of that. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so fun. Well, it's fun. Okay. You have a thing that you can connect with your audience about yes. at any time of the day. Yeah. If you were an actor mm-hmm. or an athlete, mm-hmm. Do you feel like you'd feel the same way? 
I, I feel like the athletes that are like more our generation right now are closer to influencers. Not influencers, everyone has become a content creator. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. So like Simone Biles, I think about her and I think about uh, Laura Hernandez and like Laura Hernandez is huge. Laura or Lori? Oh, Lori, Lori, you're right, you're right. Got it. Right, and yeah, she's the gymnast. Also, yeah. She was like- Like you went for two gymnasts. Yeah, I don't know. Whoever everyone watches for a one to two week period out of the year and then doesn't hear from the rest of the year. No, Lori's huge on TikTok. Fair, got Content it. Content creator. But I'm saying from like a, from what she does uh, in her competitive state. Yeah, I, oh, I think she actually did hosting this past Olympic. Good for her. Yeah, anyway, anyway, everyone's a content creator and I think there are a lot of discords that are created and then abandoned. Um, and so anyways, well, it's the most fun place. And otters are still being uh, put into the Wild Soul 9 channel on the really? DIY server, yeah. Huge. Huge. I, I think the thing with the discord is interesting because it almost protects you from like, you could say idle or I'm not, I'm not here yeah, or don't yeah. talk to me. Yep. Whether the people acknowledge it or not, doesn't really matter because mm. it doesn't like hit your notifications. Totally. I was like, Discord is Slack for communities. I don't know how to use Slack, so yes. But you do, because it's the same. You have little channels uh -huh. and they all like have topics. Yeah. And you're supposed to talk about that topic in that channel. And then after you're done with work, you hit the, I'm not here anymore button. That's kind of nice. It is. That's and you can, nice. you could do, uh, have you ever done the video stuff or the audio stuff yet? On what? Discord. Oh, oh, uh, I almost went live on video by accident, not realizing that as a video channel when I was setting up my Discord. That could have been our hundredth episode. Could have been super fun. Wait, that's what you should do on a hundredth episode. Do it live on Discord? Or a, a portion of something or do something fun. Uh, anyway, point is I'm like, I'm, I am, I'm wildly impressed with one, how well it's doing. Not that I didn't think it was gonna do well, but it's just doing very well. But two, uh, I'm wildly impressed with how like, how much fun it looks like you're having. Oh my God, it's the best time ever. No, but like actually the best time ever. It's actually the best time ever. No, 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 not like some like advertisement bullshit. Yeah. Like actually a great time. Jeremy always calls me out when he's saying something and I'm like, wow, that's super cool. Except for I put more, yeah. I'm like, I'll be like, wow, that's that's so cool. Or no, what, what is, it's not so cool. It's- um. That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That's what it is. Wow, that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. I'm just like- You, <laughs> you didn't even try. I'm like- You I'm, didn't even try. I, I, I wish that I could be <laughs> just mentally <laughs> comfortable enough to be like, Oh, is she's paying attention. She's not paying attention. She doesn't care. <laughs> she doesn't care at all. Not at all. That's okay though. So when I say that it is crazy, I like actually mean that like it's so fun and it's it's wow, it's crazy. What's your favorite channel and what's the channel that you are interested in more than you thought you were going to be? Um, Pups and Pets and General Besties are my two faves okay. for sure. I mean Pups and Pets, self explanatory. Yeah. Um and then the one that That's I everyone's kink, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. And then the Weird. one that I was gonna take say. That, can I take that joke back? <laughs> <laughs> and then I like the uh, piercings and tattoos channel a lot. Gail, earmuffs. Yeah, I said that everyone is allowed in that channel except for my mom. So many of my viewers have the coolest tattoos ever and they are just inked, inked up. Inked TF up. Got it, okay. Yeah. All right. I know. And they is can. there, I mean, have you already, I mean, do, do people know that you have like an all female team on Discord? Um, yeah, I think so. Cause all my mods are, are females. Got it, all right. Um, yeah, big fan working on some new emotes. Emotes? Bubby's emotes. Bubby's emotes? Bubby's emotes. V nerdy. V nerdy. But okay, <laughs> but Discord's a thing where it's like, if you, I feel like if you if you haven't done it before, you'd think that's not for you. Yeah. And then you would get on it, you can go, oh, this is like nostalgia from like the old chat room days. Literally. Right? From like all like forum chat room I days. I was just about to say, if but, you're listening to this right now and you're like, oh God, Discord's just for like gamers or nerds or whatever. Like the amount is. of- but it's also for. But it's also for, I was gonna say the amount of people that are in the Discord that are like, this is my first, actually one of my mods, this is her first Discord that she's ever been in. And she just like dove in, started having fun. And I was like, oh, like you're super nice, you're active and you seem very sane. And like, do you wanna be helping be a moderator? And so it's a very simple process once you get started and it is very just like self-explanatory, I guess. Sure. Yeah, it's just, well, it just I, th I think people overthink it. Um, in terms of like, well, what do you do? And it's like, you just hang out. You well, just- But also if you don't want to like participate in some conversations, you, oh, just, no. you don't have to. Totally. You know, and like, there's a whole channel if you, you want to like post your Wordle score. There's a whole channel if you want to post a picture, picture of your, your, your pups and pets. We've got horses, we've got birds, we've got fish. Do the horse girls know that you don't like horse girls? You know what? There have been a, a few really cute horses. Okay. Yeah. How about cute horse girls? Uh, you know, I actually don't actually know the personality attached to them. Got it, okay. So it's it's unfair grounds to be like, you're a horse girl. How many people have you kicked out so far? Uh, three. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening and you've been kicked out, you're part of a very, very special crew. Yeah. One guy was just like spamming different thrill ride videos from YouTube. So like it was like a wholesome spam, but I was like, can you not? Could you do that somewhere else? Can you else? literally go anywhere like, else? This is the Lord DIY Discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Exactly. So okay. I was just like, goodbye. Okay, oh, I mean, uh, and also shout out to Kenny Loves Dinos. Shout out Kenny Loves Dinos. Our, our our main guy at Discord for the talent. Yeah. Shout out Kenny Loves Dinos. That's all my Discord talk. Yeah. Anyway, Discord is amazing. If you have never tried Discord, um, I encourage you to not even just Sounds enjoy- like an ad. I know, I know, literally sounds like an ad. Um, but no, it's a lot of fun. And I feel like people get scared of it, but it is very much not scary. And it's very wholesome and very cute. You know what, Discord's probably too cool for you. Don't go, go to, don't try it anyway. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to. <laughs> it's not fun. You wouldn't like it. <clears throat> you wouldn't, you, actually, you, you wouldn't get it. Anyway. Um, so I'm on my deathbed. Wait, um, pause. You don't want to talk about my deathbed? Can we talk about that in one second? Okay, go ahead. I have a channel suggestion. Oh, uh, what? I have a channel suggestion. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. It's going to be good. Okay. Dudes only chat channel. And it's for only Lord DIY fans who are dudes. I actually had someone in the general besties chat yesterday complaining that the, so there's a girl talk channel. Okay. Because that's like an extension of the girl talk videos that I've done on YouTube, where we talk about like periods and boobs and bras and sex and shaving and like all the stuff that, you know, like the the girl talk stuff that, you know, people might be too scared to ask and like the stuff that, you know, has a stigma to it. And I don't care and I just answer all those questions. And so like that channel is an extension of like those conversations that I have on YouTube. And there was someone, there was a male who was a little, offended, I think that they didn't feel welcome in that channel. Okay. And- So we need it for the boys channel? Yeah, but then it also makes me nervous of like what the, the content is gonna be there. I'll know when to find out. <laughs> so I don't actually know how I feel. You know what, babe? I think this is the sign for you to start your own Discord server. Oh, really? For the boys. Okay. Yeah. And for so the boys. When 17 people sign up, 16 of which are women, um, what's the plan then? I don't know, for the boys. Okay. For the boys. All right. Um, not coming anytime soon. Not sure. Yeah. Okay. Work in progress. You can talk about what your deathbed? No, I was gonna say, so talking about the boys, oh my God, the third season of the boys oh. is out. And this show is not for everyone. <laughs> not for everyone. Right off the bat, it's not for everyone. They, yeah. They don't do a good job of um giving you a trigger warning for a lot of things that are probably very uh triggery. It's like comedy gore almost. Okay, that all right. It's okay. In a world- like There's lots of bloods and, bloods and guts. Bloods and, bloods, bloods and, bloods and bloods, guts. Bloods and guts. Um, I think in a world where we have been just uh, inundated with superhero mu- movies where uh, everyone's perfect and the good guy always wins. Totally. It's almost nice to see- It's the anti-superhero movie. It's the antithesis. Show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's like the ongoing like idea that a superhero doesn't have to be good. And quite often, a lot of times society makes mm-hmm. them not great. Oh my God. It's such a good show. So anyways, the new season just came out and I I don't even think- Once again, ha- it sounds like an ad. Yeah, I know it sounds like an ad. God damn, we're not being paid. <laughs> we need to be- at- But Amazon, we are available. Available? <laughs> available. Available. <laughs> we should do this um, podcast before noon sometime. Oh my anyway, God, go seriously. Um, what I was gonna say is that, so this isn't even a spoiler because it's in the first five minutes of the very first episode, but there is a, and maybe maybe this will sell you, maybe it won't on watching this wouldn't the have show. Sold, this wouldn't have sold me, but go ahead. You know what though? I I told I told Crypto Craig about this scene, and he at three in the morning with a girl that he had over, who was like a new like fling for him. Don't out him. Um, <laughs> don't <Craig>. out him. <laughs> like they stopped everything. I don't I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were up to. But it was three in the morning their time in North Carolina. What do you think they were up to? What? Warren? What do you think they were up to? They were watching The Boys. Okay. Because I told them about this scene. Um, so Craig and I have this thing where anytime either of us sees a penis on TV, we have to send each other a dollar on Venmo. And so we saw a dick in the very first like 60 seconds of the first episode. And then um, uh-huh. I don't quite know. There's there's just no sugarcoating the next scene where essentially this little man shrinks down kind of mm-hmm. like in the, like, the style of like Ant-Man. Mm-hmm. He then runs into the pee hole yep. of another, another man. man. Yep. A pee hole, the mm-hmm. hole in the penis where the pee comes out. He runs into the pee hole. Um, urethra. Into the urethra. And he's like running. It's like, imagine you were like, la 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 through a field, like running your arms through like a meadow, but he's running his arms down like the sides of the inside of the pee hole. Which sounds wildly uncomfortable. I think he was into it though. Remember? You know, they were into yeah, it. Yeah, they but- were super into it. And and so anyways, that's in the first like couple minutes. And so I had to text Craig and be like, hey, well, I- you're you're missing one point. Well, I didn't know if we should go into, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, then he sneezed on the cocaine that he was just 
inhaling and then- So little ant man, it's, yeah. it's not ant man, but little shrunken sized man inside the pee hole sneezes, mm -hmm. which then activates himself to go back up to regular Normal size. Yeah. And so then combusting from the inside of the urethra, he- Basically- Combusts um, the man explodes. attached to the penis that he is inside of. And then there's no more penis. And there's no more anything. True. There's no more anything. And so if that didn't get you to watch the show, I don't yeah. know what will. <laughs> So, and so I was like, Craig, I don't really know how much this is gonna cost me. Cause it's definitely not a dollar, but how much do I owe you on Venmo for a man inside of a pee hole that then explodes the other man? And what, he said five? He said five, yeah. Yeah. I think it probably should have been higher. Good deal. It's a, that's well, a good deal. And then no, you told him then, to watch it. And then he watched it and he sent the $5 back. So I actually broke even. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, if that didn't get you to watch the show, I don't know what will. <laughs> I can assure you that Amazon will not be reaching out anytime soon for I us to run ads. Don't think so. Either. That being said, it's just once again, it's like, oh my God, I guess that would happen if you were in the situation where you had that power and were, you know, um, partying and decided to use your powers in a partying sense. But it, it, there are less creepy and weird examples, I feel like, if you watch the show, just start at season one. It, like, it warms you up to it. Oh yeah, for sure. Also like this little man who can shrink up and down kind of like Ant-Man, he is, his sole purpose of the show is in this first five minutes, you never see him before and after he goes in the pee hole, explodes and that's the last you ever we see him. We don't know him. that, we could see him again. You think there'll be a prequel for pee hole man? Uh, there could be a post quill. <laughs> for pee hole man, uh, oh that's right. Cause they, they detain him in a bag of cocaine. That's right. And they take yeah. him out. Yeah. That's right. You're right. Oh yeah, so he might, maybe he'll come back. If anyone, we don't know. if anyone was listening to this and English was not their first language, yeah. they were looking, they're like, I, there's no chance. I'm, I Is must, there a scientific word for pee hole? There's gotta be, urethra. right? Is it, it urethra? Is the urethra. I'm, but I'm, that's like the tube, scientific. What do you think that is? What, that, what is the pee hole called? Oh, that is urethra. Your, oh, <laughs> urethral metis. <laughs> <laughs> the male urethra connects the urinary bladder to the penis. Once the bladder becomes full, blah, blah, blah. Leaves the body at the urethral fetus. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. I know that when work gets crazy and life does not seem to slow down, my anxiety definitely sparks. Sometimes I don't even realize it until it's hitting super, super hard. And that's why I love having better help on my side. I know burnout for me usually means I've been working six days straight on minimal sleep, but that's not always the case. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out and better help online therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. Sometimes that's all you need is to talk to someone and have someone really listen. Trust me, Chili's, it helps even if it doesn't seem like it would. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash WT9. That's betterhelp.com slash WT9. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. When I start my work day, I need something that is going to give my body the energy it needs to push through. I started taking AG1 every morning about two months ago, and I already have noticed such a huge difference in my energy levels, gut health, and I don't know, if you can tell Lauren, but I am uh, glowing. I feel the glow. You feel it? I feel and see. I feel and see the glow. Yeah. You're just. You're just. Uh, you're radiating Thank glow. You. I appreciate that. <laughs> Normally, I would make fun of you for that, but I'm actually really happy that you're doing something positive for your body, um, because we know that Jeremy's gym journey is uh, is is it's ongoing. Is ongoing. Is coming along. Yeah. Ever is, present. Is on the way. Oh, it's it's in a it's in a planning stage. It's, and so imagine the glow when you are gymming and athletic greening. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be dangerous. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot. Watch out um, uh, summer 2023. <laughs> With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. I like to mix mine with some water each morning on an empty stomach. Don't let the green color fool you. It actually tastes pretty great. It also feels good to drink first thing in the morning because it's almost like you can feel it start to work as soon as it hits your mouth. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. It also contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. Well, still tasting really good. And it costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. 
with over 7,000 five-star reviews. 7,001 now. I've actually, se- <laughs> I, went, I, put, I put my name. 7,001 yeah. five-star reviews. It's hard to pass up. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash wild. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash wild to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I, we need to move up immediately. What else do you want to know? That's it. This is an educational science podcast. I don't know if anyone knew that, but you can throw us under the science category <laughs> and we shall climb the ranks. All right. Well, if you watch the boys or if you do watch the boys, if you would watch the boys, um, find us in discord and tell us your thoughts. Oh God. There's actually a TV and movies channel too. And so- Of course there is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You, you are well prepared. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's the chat in general, when it gets like too crazy is like, I feel like the sign to be like, okay, we should have like a specific channel for this conversation. So people like don't feel like they're flooding other people and it's and then it's if, chaotic. If like a channel dies or like the, the engagement's not good, you can just kill it? You just kill it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Must be nice. Must be nice. Okay. Must be nice. So yeah, I'm on my deathbed because um, we, uh, who has been a previous guest on the podcast, Mia, Mia Sayoko, um, is, has in the past year and a half become an absolute animal um, in terms of her, uh, she is just exploded in just muscle, muscle and tattoos. She is wildly in shape. It is crazy. Like her transformation in, since the time I've known her to now. Is insane. I, f- I forget what she even looked like. I know, me too. It's crazy. She's so ripped out of her mind. And so anyway, I've gone to, I put my personal training on hold this week and I'm going to do the week with her um, because I'm on her guest pass or whatever at the gym. And we've done two days. And you know what? The workouts are not that different from what I was doing before. I definitely push myself more because you're like in a group setting with other people. Right. And so like, that's super motivating. The part that I'm really struggling with is the fucking 6 a.m. and the 7 a.m. of the start time. I'm dying. I was up at 5.30 today. We're recording this after nine. And I just want to be very clear that I, I couldn't even be wild till eight today. I wish that there's something about having like other people that are there that you don't want to like let down, you know? It's not that I want to let the, well, uh, like let someone down that I'm nervous of. It's more just that like I'm inspired by Mia. Right. Mia today on the leg press, she had three plates of 45 pounds. So no, four, four plates of 45 pounds. So math 180 plus me. So right. it's- Oh, so four on both sides or on one side? So three, cause it, it all it all evens out, right? Since it's plates on both sides, but it, it, it balances. So like the weight doesn't have to be equal on both sides. Right. So she had, no, no, she would have had three, four plates total, I think. So 45, so that's- Three and one? Three and one plus me. Oh, got it. Three, th- so four plates total, so, 45 pounds. So 180 plus, pounds. plus that's so flattering. 96 pounds. Yes, 120 pounds. So she was leg pressing uh, 300 pounds. A lot of weight. A lot of weight. And it was very impressive. I was nervous that I was gonna lose access to my guest pass because a employee of the gym was definitely eyeing us down because that is definitely not safety protocol. But was he eyeing you because it was funny or was he eyeing you because he was gonna lose his job so you guys needed to figure your shit out? Hard to say. Hard to say. Did you get kicked out? Hard to say. I did not. Did they tell you to stop? Nope. Fuck it. We're good. Be an adult. And then tomorrow they work out at six. (laughs) You got this. Our fitness journey, I love this. Well, your fitness journey. Fitness I love journey. this. Everything hurts. Okay. Everything hurts. You're going to be great. It's going to be great. You're going to build. You know what? The other thing too is that I'm so hungry. What do you mean? I'm just so hungry all the time. All day. I've been hungry all day. Because you just burned calories? Yes. Oh, I'm okay. starving. Well, I'm so hungry right now. I'm going to go downstairs well, and literally You've been eat. building cake. You've been baking <sighs> cake, I, I know. I've been say. baking cake. Those cakes. I've been I've been in the fucking bakery making cakes. Um. I, okay. Speaking of cakes. Yes. Um. The, the the new Mr. Beast video is, I, I don't know, like there, you could literally just say that every video he does one ups the last one that he does. When I, when you told me to go watch it today, yeah, earlier, there was one video that was out trending it and it was Apple's WWDC. <laughs> I saw that as number two on trending. probably cost a hundred million dollars. To make. Yeah. You know what? Mr. Beast video probably didn't clock in much lower than that. Okay. 
Yeah. I just, it's, in, it's insane to me that one brand in the world can beat it. And it's Apple. It's the $2 trillion brand. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so it, it I, there's just never been a creator like Mr. Beast who has pushed the, pushed the boundaries of like what a YouTuber can do. Okay. You know what I mean? Like just like no one has done YouTube videos the way that he does them. It is crazy to like the scale, to the extent, to the effort. Like, I feel like everyone was like, oh, like you, you know, we can never do that. It's like, he does the unthinkable. Why do you think that works? Or why do you think he's been successful? I should say. Because he just like keeps on pushing the boundaries. He's like, let's do a bigger. Like I'm sure the first time he spent a million dollars on a video, he was like, damn, that's fucking crazy. And then he'll just do it again and add another 500,000 to it. Do it again, make it 2 million, do it again. You know what I mean? Like he just invests every dollar that he makes back. And I think he also has a team of really great people surrounding him. He definitely does. Yeah, he's a great team. Not to say that he's not the genius behind all of it because he absolutely is, you know, like that's where it started is him and being able to like push but, those boundaries. But a genius without people that like activate. Yeah. Is not helpful. Is yeah, like, nothing. You need a team. Yeah, you really do. Hundred percent. Okay, go on. So any of this, Charlie and the chocolate, Char 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 Charlie and the chocolate factory. He recreated the entire like Wonka land, mm -hmm. like you know with the Oompa Loompas, and they've got like the grassy knolls and the chocolate river. Yes, and the waterfall. I didn't like the Oompa Loompas when I watched the movie. I also did not love the Oompa they Loompas. Make, they, they, those give me the ick. Yeah, they give I get the, the ick. ick. I don't like the ick. It's the, um, it was more just like the orange skin for me that I feel like made me a little scared. I don't know why it was so unsettling about that. I think yeah. it was that with the green hair. It's yeah. like, those are not the most, uh, those I think like the color clash the, there. The Pantones weren't good. The Pantones weren't at the match. I get yeah, it. Exactly. So I get it. It's not, it's not for me. It's mm -hmm. not for me. Um, but you know, it was just incredible seeing how he literally recreated a, 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 a chocolate river with a chocolate waterfall. Right. But okay, you told me there was controversy. So the controversy, okay, so anyway, so he goes Cause I, through- cause You told me their controversy and you're like, watch watch some of the video, which I did. Yeah. I'm waiting for the controversy. So I have a few thoughts. I got a few thoughts and opinions. Wishful thoughts, go ahead. So- And now that I've watched five minutes, I too <laughs> have thoughts and opinions. Our favorite thoughts are the uninformed thoughts. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> partially informed. The partially informed thoughts. Yeah, even thoughts. worse. So the controversy, I feel like this got two parts to it. So one, the controversy. So there is a girl, and I actually saw this TikTok before I saw Mr. Beast's video was that she didn't name Mr. Beast, but I guess his team, she alluded to his team having reached out to her. She was like a cake artist okay. to ask her to make a toilet cake. And she spent, I, she, and she said, I spent weeks making this cake because they wanted to see if I could do it before they like hired me on to like do the job. Okay. And so she basically is like, I forget what, how she phrased it, but she, Basically in a way made it more of like a teachable lesson to be like, um, the lesson here that I learned is that like, don't do work without a contract because she went through weeks and weeks of making this toilet cake. Like when I say toilet cake, I literally mean she made a cake that looked exactly like a white porcelain toilet. Okay. That's fully just a cake. Okay. What was the point? And so. Is, is there an, a, a segment of, is, it, is this cake? So in the Mr. Beast video, one of the challenges when it gets down to the last four contestants is that they have four toilets that are like, I don't know, 15, 20 feet away from them. And they have to take a guess as to which, one's at which one is cake. Got it. And one of them is cake. And so what it sounds like- Is it like, like a Netflix thing or- Because that was not like a, in the Willy Wonka, was it? That's a Netflix thing. I mean, well, I mean, it blew up all over the internet. It's like, is it cake or not? Because people have right. just been making these crazy realistic cakes. And by and the way, your butt, cheeks. Cake. Not cake, but cake. But cake. Yeah. Cake. Caked up. Um, caked up. Caked up. And uh, again, there are so many missing details, but the story that she alluded to is that the Mr. Beast team reached out to her to make a toilet cake to see if she could do it maybe just without a contract. She spent weeks and weeks making the toilet cake and then they maybe ghosted her or just, I'm not entirely sure what the second part of that well, is. Well, they obviously they did the cake thing, right? They did the so cake So somebody cake. else made the cake. Someone else made the cake. Somebody else made a better cake potentially. And it wasn't her. Got it. What are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I think without the context of it, you it's impossible to know because like also when someone does work when you're not in a contract, like not to say that it's the artist's fault, but it's really dangerous to do anything outside of a contract when you can't legally protect yourself. It's hard. It's super hard. And I think that's one of like the things that new artists or just like new anyone in any kind of community, like those are the things that you sometimes learn the hard way by accident, yeah. which is not super fun. I Cause like I've done brain deals like that before too, at the very beginning being like, Hey, we'll give you this in exchange for this. And then you deliver and they ghost you. Oh yeah. There's that's a brand, it's called Lavocracy that owes me 10K. Really? Yeah. Lavocracy? Yeah, they just went bankrupt. Oh, well. Yeah. 
I think they owe a lot of people. 10K they, then. they owe a lot of people because they were they were pushing hella YouTube uh, integrations forever ago. Yeah. And I think there was a contract maybe, but it was like a soft contract. I don't know. Anyways, I learned my lesson big time in that situation. Clear, even though there's an, a contract or an agreement, unless you want to go to court and spend money for the lawyer to sit there yeah. with litigation, you ain't getting that money. You ain't getting that money. Yeah. I know. Um, I, I mean, I feel for, mm. it sounds, I mean, I have to, after only doing, I, mean, I should say, after communicating with Jimmy's team, they're pretty good at what they do. Totally. But they're also moving fast. 100%. So it's like, from what I know, which is totally speculation, and of course, three minutes of watching the show, it's like- <laughs> We went from five minutes of watching the video to now three minutes of watching okay, the video. 220, maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, Jimmy, I promise I'll let it run for your AVD. Point is, I can see, I'm sure there's truth in the entire thing. Oh yeah, on both sides, for sure. Yeah, so I it's like, so you know, it is what it is. And also it's not like they were just like having to make a cake for no reason. Mm -hmm. They used a cake thing, but it's like, it is tough with an agreement not in place, but also if they're asking her if she can do it in the first place, it's mm -hmm. like, how do you even charge for that? Yeah. I don't know. The other thing that I was um, just like in awe over when I was watching the video is that like the extent that they build out the sets. And I, I felt similar to this when I watched the his Squid Games reenactment mm -hmm. is that so much goes into all of the sets and like the challenges. But then when they're filming it, they go through it like bam, 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 bam and then it's done. And I'm like, damn, you spent so much money and time working on this like one marshmallow room set um, and like these like spinning gadgets for this challenge to be only a minute and a half of the video. Like it is absolutely insane how much time and money goes into what ends up only being such a small segment. Right, but like look at what Fear Factor used to do back in the day for a 30 minute show. Totally, yeah, and but Jimmy takes Fear Factor and packs nine episodes of Fear Factor into a 16 minute video. But we have small, like our attention spans are this big now. Oh no, totally, totally. Yeah. But again, he's just like pushing the boundaries of like what anyone ever thought that they could do. Okay, speaking of that, uh, the whole, this book that I've been listening to. Wait, hang on, you're in luck. This is again, not sponsored, but Reed did send me these. I've got Mr. Beast bars. Would you like to try an original chocolate or a quinoa crunch? Original chocolate, please. Okay. My book plays into this, please. Oh, <gasps> really? Yes. Great catch. Um, yeah, please make sure we see that. That was a very athletic thing that I did. I would like, <laughs> like to make sure that the wide I'd angle like caught that. I like to feature that. Um, my athleticism. Also, like this was also, there's the- there's one thing that, that, like, that coats your throat and makes you sound like you have like a weird thing. Chocolate? It's, it's chocolate. Oh, I can't wait for the rest of the episode. Let's do it. Wait, wait, get the crunch, get the crunch, get the crunch. No, no, I don't want the chewing, get the crunch, the crunch. Yep. Oh, that was noise. <laughs> wait, actually I haven't tried, I've tried the quinoa crunch one. Not okay. for me. Not for you. Not for me. Is it? It's too dark, too dark but I think me. it's original chocolate, is no, it not? It's too dark, I don't like it, huh. not for me. Oh, okay. Well, um, but you know, fan anyway. Um, um, no crunch. Weak, no, do it crunch. again. I'll just chew into the mic, do the crunch. Yeah. <laughs> what you doing? Hmm? What you doing? I was looking at the packaging, the packaging's real cute. Um, I can respect a good package. It's good, Um, but I, yeah, I see what you mean. It, it's a little dark. Yep. It's dark chocolate for sure. Well, but I know we also try to make it healthy, so. This would be, it's definitely not healthy. It's cleaner than a lot of other bars. It's definitely not healthy. Here you go, crunch. Weak. I, I don't know what happened. I'm not crunching. Weak. The crunch is. All right, anyway. I think it's a me thing though. So this book that I'm listening to, so the title's called Thinking in Bets and it's by a professional poker player. And I need you to come back to the mic. I can't do that. So sorry. I was trying to chew not on the microphone for everyone for the sake of- Go ahead like, and finish it. You're fine. What's the opposite of gross ASMR? That's what I was trying to avoid doing. Oh. You know, like yucky, like ASMR, but yucky. Invasive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Disruptive, haunting. I mean, you're done. PTSD triggering. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So this book I'm listening to, Thinking in Bets, Reminds me, bets. so bets, B-E-T-S. B -E -T -S. Bets. It is so, so in line with why I think Jimmy is successful. Oh, interesting. Okay, go. go and why ahead. I think, when I think about it, the most people in life that are ultra successful, mm -hmm. it reminds me of them. And it's like this idea where life, you know, people are always like, like everyone else is playing chess or like people are playing che like checkers and he's playing chess or vice versa. Okay. And this woman basically outlines the fact that that's stupid in the sense that chess, you, when you get done with the game, if someone's better than you, they probably beat you. Whereas in life, if someone's better than you at something, that does not mean they're going to actually win. Yeah. It's a game of poker. There's a lot of like chance and luck in everything you do. And also 
in chess, you have all the available information right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Poker, you don't. Mm -hmm. And like when it comes to like thinking in bets. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I understand like poker versus checkers and chess type yeah, of, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Chess, you see everyone's moves, you have your own moves. Yeah. You can even recreate when people like write down, right? check, checkers, same-ish thing, right? Right, the strategy. Right, we're like, life is not actually like that at all because you only have what information is in front of you. Right. And then you make a, a bet on it and then it comes out. This is exploding my brain, like more and more as this like, like sinks in. Right. And Jimmy in particular has time and time again, taken everything he had and just puts it right back into the next thing. But I also think too, that like, even, even like on a smaller scale, like I think about when people are like, oh, like what was your secret? No, no. Everything in, whatever that is to you, you put everything in. No, I was going to say is that um, like, when people ask me like, oh, how did, like, what was your secret to like getting views and like gaining traction on YouTube? A big part of it is luck, is timing, is your video yeah. getting spat out in the algorithm. It's like, obviously I was consistent and I thought I was making what I thought was good content. You know what I mean? But it's like that third tier there, obviously there's more than three tiers, but like a big part of that also, and always will be just like luck and timing and right place, right time. Yep. And that's the part that like, you just absolutely have no control over. Wasn't it like the amount of people who have made good decisions mm -hmm. with bad results, far outweigh people who have made some other combination, right? The amount of people that look at a solution and take the safe route and it mm -hmm. just does not work out or take the risky work, the risky route and it does not work out. Yep. Happens all the time. Totally. Where some people make terrible decisions and it turns out somehow in, in the right way, or they make like the risky decision that like, ends up paying off that could have also been a terrible result. And also this woman like goes into the fact that we look at situations, especially the ones that we're not in, mm -hmm. and we judge it based off of the result versus some people actually make a decision that half the time would have been a really good one or even 90% of the time would have been a great decision to make, mm -hmm. but the result sucked. And we judge them because of what actually happened versus what went into it. So it's like, if you fire somebody, Right. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 my brain is, my brain is moving at maybe 68% of like what it normally- That's all I need from you. Great. This is great. Great, 68%. If you fire somebody and it turns out you can't find anybody who like replaces them and is better, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, you should have never fired him. Yeah. Well, actually maybe you should have fired them, but maybe we didn't know that it was gonna be just as difficult as it was to replace this individual, okay. right? But that doesn't mean you shouldn't have not fired him. Like it was a good decision to do it. The result just kind of sucked. Got and it. so with Jimmy, it's like, I know for a fact his net worth is largely in crypto. He continues to take almost, you know, as much of the money that he makes in any of the, like the previous videos or anything he does and just puts it right back in. Mm -hmm. And he's just making good bets that pay off enough of the time to make sure that this business is like continually to be like, push the boundaries and what's possible. Mm -hmm. I think also too, like he's doing so much behind the scenes that fund, um, and, and not even behind the scenes, but like the gaming channel, like yep. the, like I've heard him talk about the gaming channel about how um, like, the ROI or whatever on the gaming channel is huge. huge. And you know, the cost that goes into it is very, very low. Right. So, you know, the margins there are really great to help, you know, fund the videos that cost a bajillion dollars. So like he gave a few contestants $10,000 when they uh, were eliminated. The main guy won 500 grand. Wow. Um, so the title was that you would win the chocolate factory. Uh -huh. Um, but then when the guy won, he was like, do you either, spoiler alert, do you either, you can sign this over to me right now and I'll give you $500,000 for it, or you can keep it, but the maintenance for it would probably be about $100,000 a year. Uh, and obviously also no one wants a fucking set of the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Who's gonna want that? Yeah, exactly, who's gonna want that? So anyway, so at the end, at the end, so the whole time, also Gordon Ramsay was in it. I don't know if you got that far. Didn't get that far. Gordon Ramsay judges the last challenge is that they have to make in 45 minutes, a little baking, oh, whatever. I, would, I can, I would be so mad if I got to the end of that oh, challenge and there was I like, would bake a cake. Love to see what you would have made. Yeah, they, it was all, it was all pretty, pretty rough. It was I all pretty so. rough. Yeah, it was yeah. rough. But they had to use the Mr. Feastable or the Mr. Feastables, the Feastable, whatever. It was- Feastable Beastables. It was, um, it was some true genius uh, marketing integration with his own chocolate bar. <laughs> I think that was the point. Yeah, and yeah. here we are promoting it even and here we further. Are. <laughs> You're welcome, Reed. <laughs> I know. Uh, but no, I, I, I'm like, it's literally like changed the way I'm thinking about things. Because just thinking in bets in general makes so much sense. Is this, I feel like this is, uh, this is, is this leading you down a risky, a riskier path though for decision making? <laughs> this is <laughs> Not really, it's just like thinking into this stuff is like, okay, if out of a hundred times, 30% mm -hmm. of the time this works out well, 30 times out of a hundred is actually a lot of times. Right, but how bad are the other 70%? Well, you have to take that into consideration, of yeah. course. But also if you've done something five times in a row uh -huh. and it didn't work out well, 
chances are now the sixth time, it probably is going to work out, right? So it's just like taking all these things into consideration, no matter what it is that you do, and just taking calculated risks and getting better at it. I love this new perspective for you. No, it's like, it's like a game of poker. I think it's fascinating. I, I, I love this new perspective for you on life. Well, I just wish that like people would think about this earlier. To me, it's like, why are we all like worried about playing chess and checkers when really life is a lot closer to poker? I feel like one, I don't know how to play chess. So I've never thought about that as my life. Okay. Um, checkers, big fan, big fan of checkers. Big checkers fan, you um, big checkers girl. Big checkers girl. Got it. Yeah, Okay. big checkers girl. But I, I don't think I've ever thought about my life in terms of checkers because it. I think it's too dichotomous in terms of like Ooh. someone wins and someone loses. Right. Like that feels like a very like life or death decision. Like I'm trying to think about like, will I make it up tomorrow at 6 a.m. to go to the gym? Like I'm not thinking about like, am I gonna win and lose? Like, should I move backward or Are you forward? Are you gonna win and lose tomorrow? Are you gonna win and lose this little challenge with yourself? Probably. Are you gonna win and lose the inspiration? The way, the way that I feel right now, lose. No, you're gonna win. Lose. I believe in you. I'm so tired. Of I believe body. in you. It's so bad, me. I'm so mad at you. You're gonna do great. <laughs> but you know, I, I feel like, I feel like people are, can get really stuck on the granular level of like their day-to-day -day challenges, which again, can feel like wins and losses. Um, but I, I think that I almost don't ever zoom out in terms of it being like big picture of being like, like chess and checkers. I, I get it. I'm just, it, it's in my mind, you know what, it, though, it, it's pushing me. Maybe maybe when my, the other 32% um, of my brain catches up, 32% of my brain, whoa, that was rough. 32% of my brain catches up on like the 68 that we're functioning at right now. Maybe I'm gonna have a whole light bulb moment and it's gonna change everything about my life. Potentially. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Um, you wanna talk about how BTS went to the White House? <laughs> Um, yeah, sure. I think that's great. I, I literally, there is no stronger group in the world than BTS Army. I'm more of a Blackpink fan, but fine. I don't know if I would say that out loud. I'm a, well, no, no, no. <laughs> I feel pretty strongly about this. Only because I've seen Blackpink live and I have we, not we, seen BTS Yeah, live. we saw Blackpink live and it was incredible. Yeah. We also, one of our close friends choreographs all of Blackpink's music. And that also, I think- No. No, 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 no. This is okay. this is strictly about how I felt at that show years ago and oh, how I still feel. That that was hands down one of the best concerts we ever seen. And, and what's funny is like at the time I feel like I went not as a fan whatsoever. I was like, I, I will showed go. you a few songs in the car and you're right. like, oh, this is pretty lit. And then we went to the live show and, and you're like, like, oh, this oh, is shit. actually lit. Yeah, you were. Yeah. I feel like you were impressed. And now I've been wildly impressed with mm -hmm. a lot of music that's come out. I just think I'm just impressed with the fact that like ten years ago, if you were like. South Korean music in America, mm -hmm. like uh, sure, I guess. Yeah. And now it's taken over popular music around the world. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if it was like a marketing department thing for BTS or whatever to go to the White House, but there has been- It wasn't not. It wasn't not, but there has been no better campaign that has ever occurred in politics. N nothing ever has ever existed that's better than BTS going to the White House. If the next presidential candidate just aligns himself with, with BTS, BTS, yes, they will win. Well, I think also because like AAPI- Should they start their own political party? Yes. Wow. So you know what's really intense is that um, there's a certain age in Korea where you're supposed to go serve X amount of years in the army or the military or whatever. Uh -huh. And so they're all, I think a few of them are like inching up on that on that age, but they're thinking about, I think potentially moving it back a year. Army probably knows all the details and they can let us know in the comments. But I think because, this again might be totally wrong, but I think in Korea, when you're born, on the day that you're born, you are one. Yes. Yes, yes. right? That's, that is a, that is a fact, it, yes. it is. I found that out maybe a year ago. Right, and maybe. so they're thinking about how that impacts, you know, how many years you've been alive. And if they're like, oh, at age 28, if you're supposed to go to the military, like when you were- 28, my God. I, 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 it's, I think it's earlier than that. It has to be. I think, 28, I was over the hill already. Well, I think it's like, you have to go before you're 28. Got it. Is I think how, maybe it's not 28, I don't know. At 25, I think in America is when you're aged out of like the, um, or 25, 26, 27, and like you're, you can't you're even be drafted the military. anymore. No, you can't be drafted anymore. Right, right, right. Yeah, like I am, I'm good to go. That's a, so nice. If there's, yeah, that's World War so Three nice. tomorrow, they're gonna say, you're, no, 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 sir, done. you can say right there. You know how you're much done. it would cost to get the military, like to get me into shape? They would say, how much? Huh, have to invest in this guy? Not worth it. You're worth it. Thank you so much. You're worth it. They'd be like, hey, do we have anything to sell? Uh, <laughs> no, okay. Do you want to sell do you want to grenades? No, no. Do you want to negotiate our contracts down with vendors? Oh, oh, no, no, you could negotiate with other countries. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling that someone who has like a, a general sense of like like global diplomacy, uh -huh. better suited for that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. That makes but sense. As, you know what, my, my like cockiness and attitude, I go, <laughs> let me see how I do. 
I think uh, I think that's uh, in your next life, babe. That's they put me in the room with Latvia calling. and I'd be like, I don't want to negotiate you're like, you guys. Oh, oh my God, Latvia. You guys have always been like, Latvia, it's me, it's Jeremy. It's me, Jeremy. Like, I, the guy would be like, who your the biggest fuck fan. are you? <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been like a big Latvia fan for a long time. Like we don't like, care. I, I have actually my white flag right here and right. we are besties. We're good to go. We're good to go. The United States of Latvia. Um, no, I think that's genius. I think also like in the name of AAPI stuff, like what better Asians to have than BTS? Blackpink. Army's gonna come for you. And I just wanna be very clear that I am not associated with Jeremy's opinions on this. And I, just I stand his in solitude in a land where I will not solidarity. be solidarity. solidarity. I stand alone. <laughs> No, I do stand alone from your decisions. Fine, I just, and I'm not saying that, that I- Oh no, actually, I actually, that's exactly right. I stand in solitude. Okay. Yeah, I'm the opposite of solidarity. I'm just saying that <laughs> once I see them both live, then uh -huh. I'll make it a better decision. Okay, yeah. okay. Also, I think you're a little biased because you're a straight dude and you think Jenny's really hot. I don't disagree with what has been said. Mm -hmm. Next topic. Mm -hmm. Next topic. I, and I, I just think that please leave series name suggestions down below because I, again, have stumbled down a very fucked part of TikTok. And um, the, this goes beyond, so I saw this thing on TikTok. It goes okay. beyond that because this is um, a deeper conversation because I've gone down an absolute wormhole. Wormhole or I, rabbit I, hole? Oh. <laughs> A wormhole is like what's created. Like a black hole? Theoretically, when people, I think, go faster than the speed of light, I believe. Can so is it up? not a wormhole? I think the idea is like a rat, like- a Good things, on the rabbit things hole. Things in and around like, well, we've got to look this up. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure a wormhole is like the, the, the connection between like two universes or something around the speed of light. Let me see, what's a wormhole? Around a black hole? Yeah, that yeah, that would be rabbit. Yeah, so you were rabbit hole. What's wormhole? So wormhole is uh, the solution of the field equations in German board physicist Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity that resembles a tunnel. Ooh, a tunnel between two black holes or other points in space time. Yes. Um. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna uh, read the definition for going in the rabbit hole. And if anyone else needs any other worthless topics or worthless things that I can like quote on, I'm right here. Okay, so rabbit hole, you specifically use, especially in the phrase going down the rabbit hole or falling down the rabbit hole, rabbit hole is a metaphor for something that transports someone into a wonderfully or troublingly surreal state or situation. Okay, so, so I did one big rabbit hole. mean rabbit hole, but I also feel like TikTok puts you down a wormhole because it's just a lot of dark, dark places that you transport from one to the other. I actually think that it's closer to a wormhole because it takes you into a place that sucks your time away yes. and you don't realize it. Down the wormhole. <laughs> down the wormhole. As you were. Um, so I went down this wormhole of uh, these- Is it the urethral hole? Is it, it's not, no, no, the urethral metis. Oh, <laughs> of, and I, so it's called wilderness therapy. Okay. Have you ever heard of that? No, but I understand the two words and I can and add two and two together. What do you think it is? Therapy that has to do with being out in the wilderness. Wow, great job. <laughs> So wilderness therapy. How did I do? Um, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Okay. So this, so how this started is that I saw this TikTok <laughs> of this girl. Ding. So I think it's TikTok. And okay, but it's deeper than that. It's deeper than so I think it's No, no, no. I'm with you. And it starts by basically saying like um, the, about how this girl got like kidnapped in the middle of the night by these two giant dudes dropped off in the middle of fucking nowhere at three in the morning and then didn't come home for three months because they were taken and like put away at wilderness therapy. It's like a Liam Neeson prequel. Yeah, except for the parents, it's not It's not necessarily a kidnapping. I guess it's a kidnapping because the kid doesn't know that it's happening and they're being napped, but the parents are the ones paying for this whole thing to happen. And also what was that show? Was it Room Raiders where the, the people got kidnapped from their room? And yeah. obviously it was a real kidnapping, a real kidnapping in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. um, By the way, I, I work with someone who was the lead producer on that show. On Room Raiders? Yeah. I loved Room Raiders. Yeah. I loved Room Raiders. The way he described it is like, you're not, you like as a producer, he's like, uh -huh. you've seen my work. I'm not that proud of it. <laughs> and um, let's just move on. And I, I now know what he what he's talking about. I um I I actually disagree and Remitters was one of the highlights of my teenagehood. So it starts off, so these TikToks start off and they're like, oh, I got kidnapped in the middle of the night. I got taken to the middle of buttfuck nowhere at three in the morning. Which they had their phone with them. No, no, no. These are TikToks they're making afterwards, after they've come home. Okay, got it. This is post wilderness theory talks. 
therapy talks. Yes. Yes. Post wilderness therapy talk. Got it. And so they uh, basically are put into a group of other kids, usually like young teenagers. And it's, it's literally like, 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 I want to use the word jail, but that's not like oh, holes. Remember holes, the movie holes? Shia LaBeouf. With Shia LaBeouf. Of course. That basically was like early wilderness therapy. That literally was like, like just manual labor. Just go and dig holes. Manual labor, doing chores. They give you like one cup where you eat and like one cup and one spoon. Which by the way, worked out great for Shia. So. Worked out great for Shia. Really did. <sighs> I love that movie. That was a great it's movie. It's a great movie. That had some bops from the soundtrack. There were some bops on the holes. We movie. digress. We digress. Um, I'm. I'm on the edge of my seat here. Sorry, 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 sorry. I know, wilderness therapy. The dinner starts, kidnapped, put in the middle of nowhere, and they're in like the small group where they are basically forced to do hard manual labor under like- What age group are we going there? I think it's like between like 10 and 18 or so. 10 and 18, 10? That's yeah. young. Yeah, some were 19. That's not, the, that's not the age that I'm worried about. It's the 10 that I'm worried about. Yeah, no, no, it's like, it's fucked. Like this whole thing is fucked again down the wormhole. Okay. And so they're just like physically and mentally abused for the most part. And if it's, if your working conditions are you're sleeping on like the ground, you're being forced to like hike miles with these like massive 80 pound backpacks. You're given barely any food. Like you don't shower, you poop in buckets, you pee in the wilderness and it's supposed to like shape you into a better person. Okay. And so what's crazy is that Dr. Phil is like hardcore into wilderness therapy. And so like, if you go through old episodes, he's actually sent lots of kids and paid for it. And they like bring the family on like troubled teens or whatever. They bring on the troubled teens and they gift the parents like this trip of a lifetime and this opportunity, this privilege for this kid to go to wilderness therapy. And but the kid knows. A lot of times those episodes end in the kid being like, oh, we're going right now. Oh. And they like, just take the kid and you're like, okay, and we're going because there's no preparation that goes into it. And so like this whole thing too, is that like, they'll put them in the middle of like literally nowhere, like in Utah or, Utah or Colorado. So that like, you would die if you were trying to escape. Like you wouldn't survive if you were trying to like walk on foot. And I assume that they have a good enough tracking mechanism so that if people try to escape and they do escape, they'd be able to find them? I don't think so. Uh, okay. This isn't, this isn't quite, I feel like, um, the company ethics of that they would really care that much. Okay, but if you're performing a service, I don't mean to make, make this too commercial, but if you're performing a service and you your kid dies, that would be the end of that camp. So it's not because lots of kids have died. A ton, no. A ton of kids have died. 2,000 kids have died. A, a ton, a ton. 2,000. A ton. 2,000. <laughs> a lot of kids have died. How many is a lot? So, okay, so this this started in the 70s. Started in the 70s. Sounds, this sort of like a 60s thing, or at least 60s. But still going, still going, because all these kids that are making TikToks, like, and this is, I didn't realize that this is like happening now still. Like and prevalent. then, and then a lot of these places are still open. And you know who the face of this whole fucking thing is, is Paris Hilton, because her parents sent her to a wilderness therapy camp. And so she was kind of one of the first ones and the biggest, the first big celebrity to like talk about it, how she went there and was like mentally and physically abused, doing hard labor, all this stuff. And I think it was called Provo. Utah? Provo Canyon, which Provo, is Utah? still, yes, Provo, yeah, Provo yep. Canyon, Utah. And it's still open and their website is like, like you can still go and they so, basically- And she's for it? No, 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 she, she like lawsuit. While, okay, good. I was like, I need to see how some no, lawsuits no, 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 no. shake Yeah, lawsuit. Did and she sue her parents? No, I think she sued the, the wilderness therapy, whatever. So yeah, Paris was the face of this whole thing. And so she went through a whole lawsuit and like, it's heartbreaking listening to the shit that she like talks about. And so she, I think put, um, she was like all, she helped pass a bill that put some more regulations in place um, in the state of Utah. Cause I think a ton of these places are it's in- It's a federal law. Utah is, oh, federal law. Come yeah. on, Paris. That's federal law. Let's well, go. What I just found, once again, uh, com, very much incomplete research, but it looks like it's a federal law. And so Bad Baby has also been to one and she's done like a whole, um, you know, content piece on it as well too. Again, cause the fucking Dr. Phil, I don't know if he was the one who put her in there or maybe like he was the one who did it. Oh my God. 
And so she speaks out about it too. And she was like, one of the, like the camp counselors, camp counselors, that sounds too nice. One of the employees ended up dying because a kid tried to run away, hide at the car, ran over the employee. Well, that's the thing. If I genuinely thought that I had been kidnapped yeah. and dropped off in the middle of fucking Utah, uh -huh. I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fucking crazy. Cause, oh, cause, yeah. cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, it's life or death anyway. Mm -hmm. There's no world what, what I'm doing is normal. Yep. And so I'm gonna, probably try, literally it's fight or flight and I'm doing both. And so one of the other fucked up things is, is that like, oh, there's so, one of the other, I have so many fucked up things about this. Again, I have gone down the wormhole in this. Um, these, again, camp counselor sounds way too nice. Torture um, uh, consultant. Torture, <laughs> again, that sounds, consultant sounds like, again, like too intelligent. This is like a child abuse professional. Child abuse professional, wow. child abuse professional, a cap. A cap, a cap. the caps. So. The caps also will like take really staged photos of these kids to send the photos back to the parents. I think that like they're, you know, like they're rehabbing these kids and right. they're reshaping them and they're teaching them how to find themselves and make good decisions. Cause it's like, this is basically like the troubled teen industry basically. And you're gonna put them all together? And you put them all together and you break them until they like right. fix themselves. This is like what they do in Thailand to the elephants. They fajan them, I believe it's called. That's so sad. I believe fajan, I believe the, um, uh, <gasps> it, 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 it means you break the spirit. Oh my God, what the fuck? Can you look that up? Or am I just making that no, up? No, I don't know. I it's Fashan. Fashan or Vashan? That's Fashan. so sad. What the fuck? Well, I'm a wealth of worthless information this evening, but oh I'm pretty sure that's God. what it's called. And our newest one is the urethral metis. Oh, uh, oh Fashan. F P H A J A A N. Jesus Breaking Christ. Breaking an elephant's oh, yeah. spirit. P H A J A A N. Breaking the spirit. That's horrible. Yeah. The barbaric tradition of breaking this moon. That's Sleep so Sleep deprivation, sad. hunger, and thirst to break the elephant's spirit to make them submissive to their owners. Okay, so that's literally what they do in these wilderness therapy th rehab programs. It's literally what they do. It's I'm like, concerned that I know that word. To break, yeah, me too. Like how, did, how did I get there? Thailand. Oh, I think I learned that in Thailand. Yeah, I was gonna say you for sure learned that in Thailand. Look at me. Yeah, look at you. Well-traveled. Cultured. Um, and so they send these photos back to the families to like think, to make them think that they're like, oh, they're having so much fun. Like the, like they're, they're growing, their spirit is changing, evolving. In the middle of their fajoning. In the middle of their fajoning. And um, that's like what all these TikToks are usually like showing is like pictures of them, like in their hiking pants and their little sun hats and stuff. And I can see Donna thinking this was a good idea. These kids are like emaciated and they're dirty. They have one cup that they've used the whole time. They like don't shower, they don't do long. Like it's, it's literally, they just like work these kids down to the bone. And a lot of the times it's a pay by day situation. So they'll one, tell the kid they're going for like two weeks or whatever. And then they're gone for like, you know, three months, nine months. I've seen three and a half years where people just like fucking grow grow up in these things. Also, when I see ones that are really long like that, I'm like, did you, are you just like academically so behind now? Because if you're just learning how to like make fire, oh my God, another one of the things is that you don't have the privilege of eating hot food unless you can start your own fire. And so it's literally like the rubbing of the stick. Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, uh, Friction. Uh, no, yes, use it. That's, that's, the, that's the science. Um, but like I watched a TikTok of this girl showing like the supplies that are in her um, her hiking pack. Okay. And like one of the main things is like her fire starting- Her flint? No, no, you don't get flint. You don't get flint. This is like rubbing wooden poles together to like make fire. And so you don't get the privilege of eating hot food unless you can make your own fire. I wouldn't get the privilege of eating hot food ever then. Yeah. And so it's like, you're eating beans and rice every night. You're having like, like, uh, well, Beans and rice and shitting in buckets? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Tough. That is your I, hell. I just, to me, this sounds like parents who couldn't figure out how to be parents. Yeah. And so they decided, well, this is all we have left. Well, no, no, no. I think it's also too, the marketing employees at these programs probably- It's called Craig see this is a good MLM program behind this. There's gotta be, I can feel it. <laughs> it definitely is. You know, the other person is the there's, celebrity. There's, I guarantee there's referral, referral fees for this. I'm sure. Sure. Chet Hanks. Who the fuck is that? Tom Hanks' son, Chet. Fuck you, Chet. The one you know who's like kind of gangsta is like white, like rapper dude with tattoos. No. You've never seen Chet Hanks? Oh my no. God, he's such an interesting person to, anyway, apparently he was a really bad kid. And so Tom Hanks and his wife sent him at 17. And look what happened. And now he, now he's, now he advocates for, for torture therapy. He kind of did. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, it was a balance. He talked about like how fucked it was, but at the beginning he starts the video being like, I, was in a position where I was so privileged. He's like, I agree that my parents should have sent me there at 17 because I was really bad and I was going down the wrong path and I'm glad that my parents sent me. But then he goes into detail to being like how fucked it was. 
I just think that there's better options. There's for sure better options. I think there's Fast probably a world- Fast forward 20 years from now when we send our kid there, we're yeah. like, you know what, <laughs> fuck it, send them off. Well, I was looking at one of like the, the Provo Canyon one and they, like, let me go on the website. They make it sound like pretty idyllic. Like it, it sounds like a retreat. I'm sure they do. I just think that like, I'm sure that there are some kids that respond well to this. I also think that there are some kids that respond really, really poorly to this. And going back to my whole thinking and bets thing, yeah, sure, I'm sure the parents are like, I, well, there's a chance that this doesn't go well, but I think the chances of it does, like actually going well are worth the risk. I disagree. I think this is dumb. I think this is short-sighted. I think this is like a giving up moment for the parents and they deserve to go themselves. This is what you, this is how lifelong trauma is formed. 100%. This right. is how, like you don't just beat down someone. That's not how you fix mental health problems. Well, it's a perfect example of like, you know, when like someone just like, like goes off and just like goes up the deep end, like real quick and snaps. It's yeah. like, they did that because there was a time in their life when they didn't snap and it hurt them a lot and they mm -hmm. didn't want to ever be in that position again. Mm -hmm. This is what that like, like broods. Okay, so Provo broods. Canyon founded in 1971, accredited by the joint blah, 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 <laughs> uh, which I'm sure is not real. Between the ages of eight and 18, we are known for our comprehensive- Eight? Eight. That's grade three. I could barely wipe my ass when I was eight. Literally. Um, individualized and compassionate care to the students and families we serve, committed to providing innovative evidence-based therapeutic interventions, academic instruction, life skills training, tailored to individual needs of our students. I love life skills. Like here, start this fire or else your rice doesn't get to get warmed. For all those times your rice wasn't warm. Each Provo Canyon school campus provides a wide range of clinical modalities, supports, resources, and structure to ensure our ability to treat the variety of individual needs represented by our diverse student body. What's uh, tuition looking like for this? I know, I'm, hang on. Um, diagnosis and symptoms we treat include depression, bipolar, anxiety disorder, PTSD, schizophrenic disorder, mood disorders, parasuicidal, substance abuse, behavioral disorders, learning variances, and attachment disorders. You know what sounds like the answer to an attachment disorder is rip your kid away from what they're attached to. Doesn't that sound really helpful? I how, to, it, how to fix PTSD, give them more PTSD. I hope more than anything, we have a better help ad this, this week so Me that too. we can like suggest some things that um might not throw you off the deep end to get some help. It's Fucking crazy. Like, I can't believe. Oh, this one's specifically for boys. Oh, good. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Adolescent boys and girls, high school, latency age boys and girls, middle school, early adolescent boys. Oh, interesting. There's no early adolescent girls, just early adolescent boys. Yeah. Jesus fuck. Let's see if there's a tuition cost on here. Admissions. Admissions. The app, like, and there's an application process. Oh, you have to call. Of course you do. Oh, that's a video right there. That's a video right call. there. I know that's a video right there. So it is down the absolute <laughs> wormhole. Yes, this is Mr. Lewis. Yes, I have a child that I would like to um, enroll <laughs> in your program. <laughs> wow, that's a video. I've never wanted to become a YouTuber more than just to fuck with this company. Right? I would I would love to do that. Okay, so let's watch one of the TikToks I want to show you. Oh, um, yeah, me. Again, we're gonna have the audio, obviously, um, if you're on the audio side of this listening to it, but if you wanna hop over the video side, you can see the TikTok as well that we are watching and watch along. So it's like really no secret to anybody um, when I say that when I was 16 years old, I was like dropped off in the middle of the Utah desert to go to like wilderness therapy. And I'm really glad that this stuff is being like normalized on social media because I really want to talk about it because it's something I'm really passionate about talking about. Wait, did you say normalized as in it's becoming more normal or normalized to talk about it? Normalized that people are talking about going. Like when I saw one tech, I was like, damn, that's fucked. And then I kept seeing more and I was like, holy shit, this is a real fucking thing. You're on wilderness therapy TikTok? I'm on wilderness therapy TikTok. And then- Don't put me on this shit. The fact that Paris Hilton, Chet Hanks, Bad Baby had all gone to it. I was like, oh my, this is an actual thing. This is an actual thing. Okay. So today I'm gonna show you photos of me when I was in the program and kind of explain what was going on in those photos. Okay, so this is me when okay. I made my first fire. It was a tandem fire, so that means She's someone else helped me out with it. Um, I made this on like my first week there, I think. And like basically like depending on who the staff were and how long you've been there for, if you didn't make a fire before dinner, you weren't allowed to eat hot food. And it's so interesting because these schools aren't like all, they're not like a part of like a, like, like a- Accredited university? Yeah, like they're like not a, like unionized or anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're not all following the same things, but it's so interesting to see the similarities between all of them. Like the whole, like I got one cup, I got one spoon. Like you didn't wash it, you don't shower, you sleep on nothing, you hike, but whatever miles. Well, it sounds and like, then they're like part of their like ethos is like everyone has the same level of, of just enough. Everything is earned. 
everything is earned. That's what Chet Hanks was going through. Is that like, like you don't get a headlamp to see anything at night until you earn it. Like you don't, until you make five fires in a row, you don't get like a fork or some shit. You know what I mean? So everything is earned. A lot of the times, like I didn't make a fire along with the other girls. So we had to eat like raw vegetables and just My like nightmare. uncooked <laughs> things. Or like if the food had to be cooked for health reasons, then if we didn't make a fire, we'd have to leave our food out in the cold um, desert climate for it to become ice cold before we ate it because we didn't make a fire. Therefore, we didn't deserve to eat hot food. So oftentimes the staff would bring a digital camera out onto the field. And the purpose of that camera was so that they could take high quality photos and send it to our parents. And as you can see, like I'm smiling, um, these photos we kind of had to be happy in. They would never take photos of us when we were sad or freezing or cold or crying or traumatized because they would send these pictures to our parents to be like, hey, we're taking really good care of your kids and your kids are really happy here to be out in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Okay, so they must, there's two things going on here in my mind. Okay. They're creating a false narrative with the kids that the kids almost didn't have to like play or like, here's the thing that like, that really, that pisses me off. Okay. But would be the part that I have, that would probably cause the most trauma. For you. Potentially, or it would be the thing that I would do well at because of the way that I am and I can't decide. Okay. It's obvious. Well, it, it seems like she's aware of this now, but it's obvious that she was at least aware enough at the time to know that the parents are aware of everything that's going on. So no, wait, say, I don't think the parents, I don't think the parents do know what's going on. Yeah. yeah, so wait until the end of this TikTok, the parent, the parent gets there and is like, oh my God, that's where you poop. Right. But the way that she's presenting it makes me think that because they would go and take pictures, mm -hmm. unless they didn't tell them where the pictures were going, which is a chance. But if they were like, no, you need to look happy in this picture. Mm -hmm. If I was aware that the pictures were then going back to my parents, yeah. I think one of two things, one, okay, my parents are aware of everything that's going on. Mm. And so they're either at fault or to blame here. Mm. And it's, it's and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, like my parents are completely aware of what's going on, mm. but they're making us create this like false narrative. It's like actually not that bad. Okay. So there's more going on than my parents know about. And if my parents did know about that, what would they think? Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, it's like, how do you almost, like if you were to go against it and not allow them to take pictures of you act, enjoying yourself, would that piss off the company? Oh, 100%. Would that make them upset, right? You'd be punished for sure. Sure, so then it's like, you have two choices. Make it really easy for them and mm -hmm. make it seem like, oh, you're on the path to being good. This is great or whatever. And like, you maybe like would be able to like sell faster or I'm gonna fucking push back on any and everything until I can either escape or I can get out of this or my parents are actually worried about me to the point where they come get me or send some help. I think the latter option is not something that ever happens. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, severe. the punishments are so severe. Like to the point that like- well, I, I would actually think that there was 86 times where that did happen. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like <laughs> yeah. it's it's fuck. Again, this is, I just cannot believe this is like still happening. This sounds like some shit from like, again, the seventies. This sounds like um, rushing a fraternity without the parties at the end. So it was really all like a manipulation tactic by the program to kind of trick our parents into thinking that they made the right choice. This is the first picture that I took with my pack. Um, this backpack could weigh anywhere from 60 to I think 80 pounds. Um, when I was admitted into the program, I was struggling really hard with anorexia and bulimia. And I was, was carrying this really heavy backpack when I have been malnourished for a few years before. In fact, when I came onto the field, they were in the middle of the hike. So I just had to put on this really heavy backpack while I was really weak and malnourished and hike about like three miles. And we had to wear these backpacks with us every time we would hike. Um, so here's a picture of me with my mom. Um, towards the end of your stay, your parents usually go and visit you in the program. At the time, I was super, super stoked. What? It, so they have to at least, remember from a staging perspective here, because they have a little production going on. Yeah. When the parents are there, and I have to assume the parents are always at some point, like they probably have maximum amount of parents there. Mm -hmm. But at certain points, there would have to be parents coming in and seeing at least what they were, supposed to see. Right. So it's like, there's another opportunity for them to come in and like see how things are moving or like, or what's going on. But it's like, they would almost have to have like a state, like, here's what the parents can see I if don't they can't. really 
think so. Keep watching. Keep watching this, and we'll we'll follow, we'll circle back on this. Keep watching. See her, but I was crying on the inside. Um, I remember my mom being really just kind of taken aback by how gross the conditions were out there. Like the main things that shocked her were um, pee tarp, which is this tarp that we would set up at every campsite and pee behind. And there was a bucket where we would poop in behind pee tarp and she saw it and she thought it was really gross. Um, She also thought that it was gross that we didn't have any utensils and that we ate all of our food with sticks. And also that little cup that you're seeing, that's the cup that I would eat every single meal out of and we weren't allowed to wash it. Um, we had to sump it, which is basically you dip it in a bunch of dirt and just like take the dirt off with your hands. But the conditions didn't phase me at that point. Final thoughts after seeing that. It's like there are so many levels of just emotional manipulation going on here. Oh my God. And mental gymnastics uh-huh. that must go through both the how do we continue to keep these kids like contained, but also uh, compliant and complicit and keep them probably there as long as possible to make as much money as possible. Back to your point here with like, this is for sure a revenue cow. Oh my God, 100%. A hotel. If like the supplies that they have to buy are one cup per, uh, one cup per camper. This is a great business model, by the way. Yes, and not a single fork. They're eating with sticks. This girl had to eat with a stick. I saw a few where that you got one spoon that you ate everything with and you had to hold on to that spoon. Like this is the only spoon you'll ever get. So don't lose it. She was, she was stuck with sticks. The thing that they're selling is the experience. The, the family, like yeah, there, yeah. there's nothing there. I don't think that like, I mean, I'm sure for some kids it taught them to appreciate things. I'm it's sure. very scary though, seeing the TikToks of people who are like kind of brainwashed by the situation. They're like, this yeah. changed the way I'm so grateful. And like, I will say like, maybe you come home and you've never been more grateful for like a bed and a shower no. and basic necessities. No, 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 this is some handmade no, 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 shit. No, 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 but, 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 but what I'm saying is that like, okay, being grateful for a, a comfy bed is not what, you, it's like it's not an exchange for the, like the years of trauma that you're gonna have after that. Like, of course it's gonna make you miss your family, and of course it's gonna make you miss your like regular day to day routine. But like, it's not fixing anything. It's just inflicting so much fucking trauma. Well, I think it just like it it inserts fight or flight oh, into yeah. things that don't need it. Right. Right. And I'm sure that some people come away and go, now I go back to my corporate job, and it seems so easy because you don't know how bad it could be somewhere else. Sure, that could probably have been, you know come to without putting yourself through this. And also the weird thing, I guess the, the thing that I, we really didn't talk about whether I don't know if it's, like, it's always or kind of is the whole kidnap thing. Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah, it's, it's always like that. Every single story starts with that is the kidnap thing. And then too, a lot of like the- Kidnap common, or intervention? We're gonna call it kidnapping because that's what I think it is. Okay. Um, and then again, in a lot of, again, down the wormhole, a lot of the common themes is that when the parents go to go pick them up, they see like the actual, you would think that the camps would do a better job of like cleaning things up and making things look a little shinier on the well, day the, that they come and get the there kid. There has to be like a presentation. There's, like, there's gotta be like an in-between that they show on this side, but not that side. But like if when that mom goes and P-tarp is still there. Also, I'm not even kidding. They all call it P-tarp. It's not just this one girl. I've heard the word P-tarp, the, the phrase P-tarp so many times in these videos, it's insane. What are the Yelp reviews like of these places? Like, oh this thing, you would think that it'd be referral business, right? And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it can be being like, oh, you have a troubled teen. Here's where I send my troubled teen. But it, it's again, it seems like a lot of the common themes is that when the parents go and pick them up, they're like, oh, what the fuck, and then they go home. But the the companies keep them going, pay you know, pay by the day with all these like happy pictures. Well, that's the thing. I almost think that the kids, I get in my mind, it's like I would have to come up with a new narrative for my parent to think that I got enough out of it. Right. And it was terrible yeah. that I learned my lesson. So I don't need to go back there. You know what I mean? I don't always have to like keep the narrative up. But it, it, it's like, it seems to be different in a lot of the videos on like who makes the decision of when they go home. So sure. Chet Hanks was talking about how there's like a therapist um, who discharges you and like the mental manipulation that you go through with like this person, they're the one who releases you. Where I think sometimes it's like they paid for a set amount of months and they go pick them up at the end of it. So I think it differs depending on the really fun summer camp that you've been kidnapped to. I traumatized by. We found some reviews of uh, of, of camp torture. <gasps> oh, oh, okay. Oh, Wingate. That's another one. So this, again, also Wingate. In, Wingate. I saw a few on Wingate. Um, it's like a hotel in Vegas. That's the win. Okay, this one is ruined my relationship with my children. At this program, they moved out, and I have not spoken to them since. I have no deeper regret than putting my loved ones through this hell. Almost died in a blizzard. My friend broke her back and rib, and we had to refuse to hike for two weeks with no food to get her medical attention. 
no contact with the outside. They don't tell you the time to brainwash and disorient you, force you to walk for food and water. You don't see what you look like the entire time you're there. A male staff harassment, the girls I was there with, you are mentally manipulated. They force the children to smile for photos to send to their family, absolutely traumatizing. I still have nightmares about the 72 days I was forced to spend there. Please do not send your child. My son was neglected, abused, left dangerously dehydrated for days, was diagnosed with lithium toxicity and severe dehydration. Spent 10 days in ICU and hospital at a children's hospital. This was three weeks into the program. His feet filled with splinters and blisters on top of callus blister. Now he has PTSD and ongoing medical monitoring. This place is dangerous. If you receive a call that your child was taken to the local hospital for whatever reasons and are told not to come, I cannot stress enough, you better get out there to make sure your child is getting the proper care. I flew out to find my son in a bed, laying in his urine, struggled to talk, walk and eat. And all they wanted to do is hydrate him and put him back in the field. Well, on that note, what a happy place to end the podcast this week. <laughs> Babe, will you close us off with something happy? I have something relatable to end this note on, actually, to be okay. very relatable. Go ahead. I can, the, the, the trauma that it sounds like went on in this- This doesn't sound like a happy ending. In this, um, <laughs> in this little situation here that's ongoing, uh -huh. reminds me uh -huh. of here we go. the journey that I took for 14 months without my Tesla. And, <laughs> and I can say that at the end of that 14 months- Right, the neglect that you felt from as Elon. I'm, as I'm now programming mm -hmm. and like learning how to not drive my yes. autopiloted vehicle. Yes. I can only say that the wait was worth it. Uh -huh. And I would wait another 14 months if I needed to, because the car is that good. I don't quite see the similarities. What I was gonna say on a happy note is that Moose has healthily recovered from his- um, Except for now he's got a paw thing. So he's walking around with a little bit of a limp. <sighs> you know what though, the paw thing immediately goes away anytime there's food um, in the area. So I'm not entirely sure if we have a paw thing. Uh, our theory is actually that he misses the attention that he was getting last week when he was like post and he's, operation. He's developed a and bit of a, a little limp. He's trying to figure out how he can milk the rest of the uh, the 24 hour pampering he was getting. Is it a limp? <laughs> is he a wimp? We don't know. <laughs> and on that note. Bye, love you. Bye.